Do you want to know how to teach a child to express feelings? It's very important and some of them like to clam up. I'm Nicolene Peck and I teach all about parenting, good communication, and how to build strong family bonds all over the world through the lens of the principle self-government. And in this video, we're going to be talking about feelings. <laughs> In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you some tips for helping your child learn to feel safe and comfortable expressing their feelings. And then also, I'm going to be sharing with you something that you can do that no matter what will always make them feel safe. So why do children not express their feelings? Well, maybe they don't have practice at it. They, they don't know how to describe what's going on. Maybe they don't have the words. Maybe they feel like it makes them feel weak if they have a feeling. Maybe people in your family don't discuss their feelings that much. And if that's the case, then they may not feel like that it's safe to discuss feelings. Maybe somebody has been condescending regarding another person's feelings. That would make a person feel like, well, I can't share what I'm feeling then because I don't know how that's going to be taken. So we do have to create a safe environment for people to share feelings. And when I say safe, I'm talking about the more subjective safe, not the real objective safe. Because objective safe is when you're free from like physical danger, psychological danger, you know, sexual danger, those types of things. But we sometimes think of safe in this a little bit more loose term like, I feel like it's going to be okay. I feel like someone's going to really listen and I won't feel bad after I'm done. Okay, that's a very subjective feeling of safety and, you know, not something you could take someone to court over. Anyway, just to be clear about what we're talking about there. So how do you become that safe place for a person? Well, I'm going to talk about that at the end because becoming that safe place is key. That's the number one thing is that you actually feel like the type of person that they want to talk to, that they feel like would be healing to talk to. So many children don't have the words for feelings and so sometimes we just have to talk about what feelings are. I remember that when my son was little, he was a tiny baby, somebody gave him a little book and it had a mirror in it. You know how the, some of those books, you open it up and there's a mirror and then there's the story. But each of the pages showed a character, a child, and they were dressed in a creative way, but they had different expressions and each page of the book was about that expression. And so you'd put the mirror out and you would show the expression or you would read about the expression, you'd look at it and then you'd try to make the expression on the page. So you would try to express sad and you would try to express sleepy and you'd try to express angry and you try to express surprise, okay? All of these things that people express because of their feelings, okay? So these expressions oftentimes are our emotions that come after our feeling, but they help us understand our feelings a little bit. And I think that's why people interchange the words feelings and emotions because they're so closely connected to each other and they do help us, one helps understand the other. So when you're with your children, talk to them about the way that people express themselves, what it looks like, what it feels like when somebody is angry and see if they can describe it to you. See if you can describe it to them. You can draw pictures of it. You can tell stories where it happens. I mean, think of Goldilocks and the three bears. How many times does she get surprised and then they come in, the bears, and they get surprised at her. And what about the three little pigs and how they're so afraid of the big bad wolf, right? And so they're running because they're afraid. So reading children's stories like Goldilocks and the three bears or like the little engine that could who feels worry and feels stress or maybe the story of the three little pigs how there's a feeling of happiness and confidence then there's this also this feeling of fear that's in there talking about all of those things with the children is very enlightening because it's hard for them to really put words to what they are experiencing unless they've been able to see it in another context and those children's stories don't just teach good 
character development and good social skills and communications and stuff like that and what not to do and what to do, you know, some of those Aesop's fables types rules, but they also help a person get in touch with why they do what they do, which is really important. When you were talking about understanding emotions, we're talking about understanding why do I do what I do? And that's powerful knowledge to have. Now, I know there are a lot of opinions out there. Even the experts on emotions and on feelings don't agree. Some of you right now might not agree with me right now, but if you have an opinion or a thought or something that you would like to express, do it in the comments. I'm sure we could have some robust chat down there. I will say that emotions are probably some of the things that are the most misunderstood and so trying to get a child to understand emotions without having some mature understanding of how their body works can be very difficult. So we have to start with things like expression and how we express certain things. We have to start with stories or their songs sometimes that can teach some of those same things. You might share some of your personal experiences. You might say, right now, I feel frustrated but I'm going to choose to think this about it because I don't want to end up feeling like I want to fight that person. Instead, I want to feel like I can talk about it with that person. And so I don't want to go to that emotional place. And so just explaining what you go through, because those are moments you go through in your own head, in your own body all the time. If you explain those things to your children, they learn a lot by just hearing and seeing your experience. Another thing that you can do is you can, and I'm going to tell you to be careful about this, but another thing that you can do is when your child is expressing something, so maybe they're crying, you could say to them, oh, it looks like that you're feeling sad. Now that's gonna help them feel a little bit better for you to just bring that on. But it could be that they're not sad, that they're frustrated instead. Or it could be that if anytime they want your attention, they start to just express like that. So you do have to be careful with this one, but sometimes it's very effective to just bring it to their attention in the moment, but don't overdo it. Don't be like, oh, well, you're this, or you're this all the time, and then give them attention for that and talks about that. Teach them a little bit and then let them carry on. And if they ever need to talk to you about something, hopefully they'll have better words to share with you as they're expressing what's going on inside. I will say that over the years, I've been teaching parenting stuff now since 1999. So that's a long time that people have been having me teach things. And um, I learn a lot of things along the way. I observe a lot of things in different people's homes. and in their personalities and just everything that happens. But I've noticed there's some trends th that relate to this particular question. People wanna know how to help their children express their feelings and, and recognize their feelings or their emotions because they want the child to not be bound up with those emotions and that's good, that's a good thing. And, and a child should be able to talk to you about anything. That It should have a feeling like that in your family. But there's also comes a point where a child needs to be corrected for something and the child is expressing some sort of emotion or a feeling of some sort and the parent does not do the correction because the emotion sidelines them. If this happens, then it's very likely the child is going to continue to use that emotion again and again to get out of ever having to take responsibility and be corrected. So please watch for that. I see a lot of very wonderful parents, good intentions, who when their child is actually misbehaving, end up talking about all of their feelings and their emotions more than they help direct and teach the child forward. You could acknowledge a child's emotion. You could say, I know you're frustrated right now, but this is what you're doing and this is what you need to be doing. So let's start taking steps going in that direction. And then if the child needs to talk about it, then they could say, mom, can I talk about my frustration? Or you could say, let's get ourselves going in this other direction and then we'll talk about that frustration when you're not experiencing it anymore so that you can look back on it and recognize what was really happening. Lots of times when we look back at the moment of feeling or emotion, we actually learn more about it than when we're right in the middle of it. That was something that really made a difference when I did therapeutic treatment care for all of these trauma children. I would say, we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna spend a lot of time talking about that. 
but we're gonna get calm first and then we're gonna talk about it because we can't get to a place of understanding with yelling and screaming and crying and we, we won't ever really know when you're just in the heat of it. So that's another thing to do to help the children. So there's my warning for you. There's so much I could teach you related to self-government, skills that you could use for your children. If you have enjoyed this video, you'll probably like my next one, which is the not so known secret for parenting success. So click on the link to that video now. I'll see you there.